Welcome to Sunhaven, the farming life sim with a fancy twist, with so many unique places to explore, bosses to defeat, and people to meet. This game is just really beautiful, so please subscribe and enjoy the video. I began my journey on the train to Sunhaven, where I, the demon boy, had a nice conversation with a woman named Lynn. Suddenly, everything went dark, and when we arrived, there was an ominous smoke surrounding the train. We were met by some townsfolk and told not to worry about it, so I took their advice and placing down my new home on my farm, I had a chat with a merchant named Anne. I bought some seeds and tools off her and got to work clearing some space and planting them all. I completed a quest of planting the seeds and decided to head into town. I met some random townsfolk before finding the general store where I met Emmett the storekeeper and bought some seeds. I was then prompted to head to the quarry so I stumbled around helplessly for some time before checking my map and making a beeline towards it. There I met Solon and while we were talking a dragon rudely interrupted us dropping stones all around. Help Solon break the fallen rocks. What do you mean help him break the rocks. He's just standing there. What are you doing? I did it all by myself. He thanked me, then told me to go to the town hall. So I returned, but unfortunately it was closed for the night, so I spent some time sparring with some dummies, rewarding me with a sword. Happy with my progress, I headed home. Oh, what is this? A W. I took a potato seed. I watered my seeds the next morning before reading a letter I'd received from Bernard. Yo, torch and fence? Accept items. Nice. Heading into town, I remembered about Lucia, who I needed to talk to at the town hall, and heading up, I was distracted by a fountain. Oh, plus four mana. Hey, nice. Talking to Lucia, she explained her plan about getting some bait for the dragon disrupting things in the quarry, and someone named Kitty butted in to explain that we needed a big juicy fish. So I was sent down to the southern docks to find a man named Peter. What? <laughs> Wait, that looks sick. When I got to the docks, he was there to greet me, and after giving me a fishing rod, he decided to catch the fish I needed for me. This is not exactly what I'm looking for. I eventually got the fish, and after collecting all the things all over the floor, I wandered up to the town hall. Kitty had unfortunately left, so I exited, and there she was. Yo, do I smell a big tasty fish in your pack? <laughs> <laughs> she told me to come back tomorrow, so in the time being, I decided to run over to the quarry as I needed some ores. I arrived and cleaned out the large area before realizing that the mine started at the minecart. Wow, wait, this is so nice. I got two levels down and gathered a bunch of ores before looking at the time and quickly rushing home. Anne was waiting outside for me the next morning, and after handing me a furniture crafting table, I placed it down and headed into town, as Kitty should be done crafting my dragon bait. Talking to Nathaniel, he gave me a quest to get 10 coal, but I needed my bait so I continued on. I found a random wheat field and for some reason decided to scythe it. I got in trouble. Nonetheless, I gathered my dragon bait from Kitty and wandered back to the quarry. Solon told me to get a dragon trap from the general store, so I went straight over to the town hall, realized that was a different place, found the general store, and got my trap. So we placed it down with the bait and waited patiently. The dragon appeared but seemed friendly, so Solon, after some deliberation, decided to befriend it. Happy for him, I headed down into the mines and gathered coal for Nathaniel, exited when I had enough, and handed them over. I was asked by Lucia the following day to meet her at the town square tomorrow at 10am, but you can't see it because I forgot to record. I clicked record and wandered into town where I bought some storm melon seeds for all of my money, returning home and planting them. After watering them as well, I saw my farm was a little messy and got to work clearing out a huge area of the weeds and rocks around the place. But night was falling and I still had one thing I wanted to do. I had been given a rod for a reason. Finding a suitable fishing spot in town, I got catching. Quickly enough, I got the hang of it, but there was a couple of mechanics that were still a mystery to me. Like, how on earth am I supposed to catch this? When night fell, I sold all of my fish. Something happened on day five. What on earth is that thing? Weedle. My my, what a lovely place. To spread weeds, that is. <laughs> Who is this goof? Heading up to the strange monster, it told me that it wanted a jump rope competition. So, I gladly accepted. But it was a little difficult because of the pixel graphics and I thought the rope was swinging in the opposite direction. I eventually gave up and headed into town to see Lucia in the the town center. Together, we trekked up the mountain to meet a giant golden dragon with a ruby on its heart. Damn, he looks really cool. For whom do you live life? My family, that's nice. Where I blind, I would surely think a young dragon stood before me. <laughs> what does that mean? Hooray, I got some bonus mana. Sure, I was happy to have met the golden dragon, but I wasn't done with Weedle. I cleared a bit of its dandelions, then headed back up and noticing I could get help from a friend, I wandered back into town looking for Lucia. She told me to see Lee Liam the baker, as he had two younger sisters who loved to play jump rope. I eventually located the children and brought them down to the weed monster. After failing a couple more times, I realized which direction the rope was spinning and defeated the creature. 
we all said our goodbyes as it burrowed away, dropping me a bunch of cool loot. I spent the night clearing some of the mess and planted the seeds that Weedle had generously dropped for me. I checked the mailbox and surprisingly there were 20 flower seeds waiting for me, the reward of my skill level ups. And apparently I would be receiving them every Friday. I quickly planted them, then fertilized a couple before deciding to do some exploring on my farm. Heading south, I found a beach area and after clearing it out, I headed east, paying no attention to the sign on the ground. On the other side were my first enemies, little crabs. I easily took care of them and continued onwards. I arrived at the south dock, cleared the area and chatted with an otter who said they had lost a fishing net. So in an attempt to help them, I headed on an adventure along the beach. As I headed further away from civilization, the enemies began to get tougher and tougher, but luckily my sword was strong and my movement was on point until I got hit a single time and passed out. Waking up in the hospital, the doctor was kind enough not to charge me and told me to be careful. So I picked some berries and ran straight back in, but I was getting worryingly low, so I decided that that was probably enough for today. There was a baby dragon eating my crops. After it phased out of existence, I got to work harvesting and watering, and after crafting up a farmer's bench for a scarecrow, I wanted to explore again. Soon enough, I found a Snorlax blocking my path, but unfortunately, I didn't have the food it wanted, so I was forced to take a different path. I eventually found a new western area with a red Snorlax who wanted even more food. I ignored it and continued west, fighting a bunch of monsters along the way. I made it past some really beautiful looking levels before finally arriving at the end where I picked up a mana book and noticed a sign reading beware of slime. And there he was, the King Slime. But my knowledge had come in handy and all of my combat skills honed to the- I was billed 200 gold for the hospital visit. When I returned home, I placed down my new farmer's bench and spent the night crafting up a chest which I put down and used to store my items. The baby dragon was back. I tried to stop it, but it phased out of existence. I spent the morning chopping a bunch of trees on my farm as I needed planks for a whole bunch of different crafting recipes I was working on. I also noticed I now had enough apples, so I headed up and fed them to the Snorlax. It disappeared, leaving me with a little plushie to remember it by. Touched, I placed it down in my house and forgot about the area that I had just unlocked. Instead, I wandered into town and found a fountain, which after noticing that the text changed every time I tried to drink it, I kept on clicking until I was rewarded with a farming amulet. I was then tasked by the fisher guy to find his lucky lure, so I got to work clearing out the entire beach, looking in every possible spot. I finally found it because I thought it was part of the background and gave it to him. Chatting with a couple of villagers, I fished in the pond for a while. But today, I remembered about the new area and after getting a scarecrow crafting, I headed straight up. Unfortunately, it was just Kitty's ranch. Disappointed, I stole some local produce and visited a fancy looking manor before finding a dark forest area with a chest that needed a mithril key. Very mysterious. But today, I wanted to get as far down the mines as I could get, so I accepted a quest from a man named Rex to get his hat back, which he had conveniently lost in the mines, was introduced to the museum, and arrived at the quarry. I got straight to work mining stones and gathering all kinds of resources, leveling up my mining a bunch. Unfortunately, it was still hard to find the rusty keys that I needed to progress down the mines, so I only made it to level 4. Sad that I hadn't found Rex's hat, I placed down the goofy looking spring scarecrow. I heard that using a copper key in the mines opened that level permanently, so after collecting a letter obviously not sent to me, I crafted up a smelter and oven to begin my journey towards some keys. I then headed into town where I chatted with some shady looking folk, met Duke the Dragon, found the mailman, and handed over the mysterious letter. Tonya the mailman thanked me and told me to keep it a secret, handing me a speed potion. Seems like bribery. I also realized that I had actually picked up Rex's hat in the mines yesterday, so I handed it over. I returned to my farm where I placed down my new oven and smelter, cooking up four copper bars. Needing more copper now, I wandered down to the mines where I found Lynn, the person on the train from the beginning, and handing her an apple, I realized it was her birthday. It wasn't what she wanted, but that's on her. I spent some time searching for copper in the mines before coming back to craft up my anvil where I would hopefully make a whole bunch of keys. Which was my plan the next day. I stepped out of my home, oddly getting another Snorlax plush, which I placed inside my house. I then got some free ingots from Lucia, and after smelting up some copper and cleaning out the upper area of my farm, I got some keys smelting. When I eventually had two, I ran into town, said I would get Topi's homework back, bought a new copper pickaxe from Salon, and said hello to Lynn in the blacksmith's shop, then headed down to the mines. I opened the first two levels with my keys and continued onwards gathering copper the whole time. I made it to level 6 with a whole bunch of new loot in my inventory. I rushed home and was a little sad with all of my lost mine progress. I realized the next morning that I had been using my old pickaxe that whole time. A little annoyed, I decided to craft up a juicing station and got a couple more keys using the copper I had farmed yesterday. Placing down my new juicer, I just crafted up some glasses of pure water and got to work chopping a bunch of trees. But when my keys were done crafting, I headed straight back over to the mines, picking up an orange 
orange along the way. When I arrived, I noticed a small green toy on the floor, so I picked it up. Not knowing exactly what it was, I said hello to Lin and opened up two more gates permanently using my copper keys. I also noticed that there was a chest on floor 11, so I made it my goal for today to reach that treasure and find out the riches inside. I spent the entire day down in the mines, gathering as much copper as I could and slaying a bunch of enemies. I also did some pretty sick parkour. Eventually, I'd reached level 10, one level to go at almost 11 p.m., so I hurriedly chopped as many rocks as I could, amazingly getting the key that I needed. The chest room was a really cool, aquatically themed place, and the chest contained a bunch of ores and coins, but I had to quickly leave as time was ticking. I somehow made it all the way home with only 10 minutes until I would be knocked out. My initial plan for day 13 was to make more keys, then head back to the mines, as I had a stupid amount of copper mined from yesterday, but my plans were about to change. While I was waiting for the copper to smelt, I headed down and was just collecting up forageables on the beach when I leveled up my exploration, completing a mission. I can sense your power growing. Your service to Sunhaven has become notable, but today the safety of Sunhaven depends on you. I'm on my way. So off I went in search of the woman who would bring me up to the dragon. Yo, Rosa, what's up? Are you headed to Dragon's Meet? I need an escort, yes. Yo. Delve into the wilderness. Go to East Sunhaven and found a crystal named Glorite. Return with it as soon as you can so I may begin my journey. I got you, Ray. I got you. So the dragon basically wanted me to gather a gem which would help him with something so he could leave and take care of some business. Okay, off I go. I didn't remember if I had access to this area before, but nonetheless, I was now here. I talked with some people and killed a couple of monsters before finding a sign which pointed upwards, leading the way to the Glorite Cave. But it was getting kind of late, so I decided to deal with that tomorrow. So after quickly crafting up some copper keys, I headed over to the quarry, which after realizing I had arrived at the wrong place, I turned tail and returned to the eastern forest, where I finally headed through to the mysterious Glorite Cave. I was met there by three men who seemed to be stealing the Glorite crystal that I needed. Luckily for me, I told them that they were hurting the forest by taking it, and one of them ran away. Not wanting to spend 500 gold on bribing them, I told them to get fighting. Running in circles, I defeated them relatively easily, collecting my Glorite crystal. But I wasn't allowed to go on and chase them, so I returned into town where I saw the thief that had been captured. We let Stefan join Sunhaven. Everyone deserves a second chance, of course. I found Rosa, the soldier lady, and told her to bring me up to the mountain. Oh, okay. He wanted it for protection. I will not be gone longer. Goodbye, uh, big man. So with all of my two days to mess around, I decided to get to work completing some of the tasks that I had accumulated. First, I headed to the library to pick up a joke book for the guard, returned the toy I had found at the quarry, picked up the joke book, and happily handed it over. I then saw that I needed some medicine for the farmer's shop, so I headed over and searched for it, but there were no medications in sight. Another stranger had arrived on my farm. Krusty? Wow. <laughs> Who is this guy? After quickly watering my plants, I decided to head straight over to see what the deal with the stone formation was. Hello, Krusty. I bet act fast before he keeps messing with my farmer. I think I know some people who could help me out. Okay, blade buddy. So off I went in search of help to defeat the massive rock. First of all, I headed over to Nathaniel because he was a man with a big strong sword. I looked in the barracks, but he wasn't there. So I checked the beach, but he wasn't there either. So I headed back when I eventually found him. He told me to tell Rosa that he would be away. So I wandered over and told her. The next step was to get Lynn to help me as well. So I found her after some searching. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, her pickaxe was being repaired by Solon at the moment, so I did her a favor and ran to the quarry picking it up. I then returned to Lynn, gave her a pickaxe, as well as let Nathaniel know that Rosa knew he was going to be away. By now, it was getting kind of late, so I headed over to Krusty the Rock and with the help of my two friends, spent the entire night chopping away at its 100,000 health. I got a message that morning, the dragon wanted to talk, and Krusty was still just sitting there. I quickly harvested all my flowers, then sold them off, before heading up myself and helping out hitting Krusty with my my pickaxe. I sat there until he fell below 60,000 health and decided to leave the rest to the others. In the meantime, I decided to speak with a gigantic golden dragon. So I went over and spoke to Rosa, who was happy enough to bring me up. The dragon, who had returned from their journey, told me that the moon dragon, who lived up north, had made this dark mist and I needed to defeat them. Travel to 11 City Nelvari. Okay, travel to the northern forests. <laughs> Off I go. So of course, following the dragon's orders, I got the guard out of the way and entered the northern forest. I I listened in onto some 
Luffy, Goblin's conversation, and after having a chat with some miners, I was let into the sandstone quarry nearby. The stones were pretty tough to break, so I did some fishing instead, eventually deciding to get down to business and chop a bunch of these rocks. When night was falling, I returned to the town and went over to the library as I need to speak with the librarian. Unfortunately, she had closed. So after crafting a chest and a bunch of other items, I hit Krusty for a few hours and wandered back into town. I talked to Lucia and entered the library, where the librarian told me she had a book I had been tasked by the dragon to read, but she wouldn't let me read it, telling me to get permission from Lucia the mayor first. She had disappeared, so I ran over to the town hall where she was sitting on her throne. She told me that to read the book I would need silk gloves as the book would fall apart if I used my normal hands. So I returned home and seeing as I could craft a loom with a little extra wood, I chopped a bunch of trees. And after setting the logs all up to craft into planks, I headed up to where Krusty was residing, deciding to spend the rest of the night chopping until he had left. And eventually, I did it. So close. <gasps> did it work? Uh, <laughs> what? what a goofy guy. Hey, nice, he's gone. And I... Hey, I got a little guy as well. I grabbed and placed down my new loom the next morning, then while I waited for some fabric to craft, I got to work clearing up the mess that Krusty had left. I made a bunch of progress before crafting up my gloves and returning to the library. I was wearing them when I entered, so for some reason the game didn't recognize I had crafted them. Luckily, I progressed the story by simply taking them off. Unfortunately, I couldn't read the book anyway. The uh, yeah, I can't read that. Okay. I need to find Edwin. Who's lost to lose? No way, you lost it. <laughs> what a goof. So, I wandered over to the tavern, where after accepting a quest to kill leafy dudes, I talked to the elf. He called me a racist for thinking he could read it. So, I returned to the librarian, who didn't like my accusing looks, and instead went for a less touchy and simpler solution. Get my hands on an ancient artifact that was capable of reading any language ever created. How would I get my hands on this? Conveniently, the merchant had bought one, but there was a catch. She had lost it in the woods, and I would need to get all of her treasures back to loan the stone tongue. So, I ran straight over to the western forest, which I found after a little searching. Luckily for me, the treasures were unbelievably obvious, so the only challenge was fighting off the large amount of monsters. But nothing else really happened on my adventure, and I eventually secured the four treasure bags belonging to Anne. So I ran through town and entered her shop where she wasn't there, so I went to the tavern instead, where after collecting my reward for killing the leafies, I spoke to the merchant. She expressed her gratitude and gave me the magic stone, which running back to the library, I handed to the librarian. Finally, we could read the ancient book. It was a goofy little puzzle. I was sure I really didn't need the help to decode it, but I was urged to talk to the elf that had accused me of being a racist, so I obliged. The elf told me he could tell me what it meant, but it would come at a price, his bar tab. Fortunately for me, it wasn't paid in money, but in elven grapes, so after collecting the seeds I needed, I spent the night planting them and watering. These were indeed elven grapes, as they were harvestable in just one day, except that they were all dead. So I picked all of the wrinkled up grapes, and after planting my 20 weekly flowers, I headed back into town and into the tavern. I actually hate this guy. What a Oh, man. Edwin told me that they didn't have enough energy and I would need to mana infuse them. He also recommended that I could learn how to off of Lucia. So I asked her and she was happy to help. After I learned that all you needed to do was click E, I returned to Edwin, who was more than happy to supply me with 45 grapes. Nice. He got me 40 more. No, okay, I love this. Yep. I spent a bunch of hours hoeing out space, planting the seeds, infusing them with mana and watering them. By the time I had finished, it was getting dark, but I still had one more thing I needed to do. I had created at this point a huge amount of copper keys, so entering the mines, I was able to permanently unlock all of the gates up to the chest room. I still had a little time left, so I mined out a couple of levels I could reach below level 10, but when it was getting real late, I sprinted right home. Finally, my grapes were ready, so I harvested them all and watered my flowers before heading straight into town to give the grapes to the elf. He told me that they meant nothing all along, but I could still enter if I told them the words. This may be my least favorite line of code ever. Nonetheless, I headed over to Lucia, who told me to meet her at the barracks as she had something to give me. So I headed over and she wasn't there. So I returned to the town hall, but she wasn't there either. So I returned to the barracks where I just stood around for a while waiting for her to arrive, checking the building which she was not inside, but triggering a cutscene which made her spawn in, which was interesting. What do you want? <gasps> Seal of Sunhaven. Nice. Surely give me like a good sword, right? Salt boots. Sick. Now that I had secured the items, it was time for me to find the mysterious elven town, or something. My journal told me to go west, so I headed off. Soon into my adventure, I found a man on the floor. Hello? Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna go to the doctor, I guess. Doctor, yes. 
Injured person. Let's go. Thank you very much. Distractions aside, I wanted to find this new area. I passed through everything on my way, eventually once again finding myself up against the giant slime. And with my inventory filled with food, I decided it was time for me to win this fight. Hello? <laughs> Let me do something, man. I'm quitting this game. I watered all my flowers, then putting some fabric onto craft, I received my first batch of animal food, which was another weekly subscription. But I didn't want animals quite yet. I wanted a better weapon and some better armor so I could kill the stupid slime. I first completed a quest for the receptionist to bring him some fabric before heading straight over to the mines where I decided to stay the entire day gathering iron. This was because I would hopefully get some keys to reach the second treasure room, which would surely have some insane weapon, hopefully. And I made some decent progress learning a new spell, which was pretty cool. Overall, I mined a stupid amount of iron, maybe not enough to fully unlock this layer, but certainly a solid start. I harvested my flowers on day 23, then upgrading my animal subscription and crafting up some keys, I headed into town, deciding that it was just about time for me to finally get a barn. Unfortunately for me, I didn't remember where to get one, and this is where I wasted the entire day. I looked in Kitty's house, Kitty's shop, the general store, the farming store, all the random stalls around the place, the pet store where I bought a leash, the spring goods store, Store. The general store again, the farming store again, where I accepted a quest from Catherine, two random people's homes, and finally the town hall, which on hindsight was incredibly obvious. I bought a barn and a feeding station, returning to my farm to place them both down. I also wanted to use my leash, so I bought Pebbles out and put him on. I think I'll name him Nob. I patted Nob, then headed outside to collect my iron keys, and after watering my crops, I decided to donate some things to the museum. So I scoured my items and picked up any that said they would look great in a museum. Once I had them all, I headed over and entering one of the back rooms, I realized that literally any item that existed in the game could be donated. I'm obviously exaggerating, but there was a lot to do. A little overwhelmed, I decided to ignore it for now and attempt to make it to the second treasure room. I first used up my five iron keys that I had stored up, and from there chopped the rocks and killed monsters as quickly as I could. As I progressed through the levels, I found more and more new items, such as gold ore and even adamant ore, which I could use to craft incredibly strong armor and weapons. Excited about this, I I mined even more of it and eventually made it to level 21. It was a dark red theme with a Snorlax that ate ores blocking the path. I carefully opened the treasure which gave me some ores as well as a ring, which would be great if I didn't already have one. I set my sights on an adamant sword the next day, which required more ore as well as a combat level of 20. So of course it was time to head to the mines, until I saw a strange purple bear. It was a merchant who was exchanging goods for little tickets that I had been finding in bushes and trees. But I couldn't afford anything so I just went on my way. My goal was to level up my combat a couple, as well as get enough adamant ore for my sword. Unfortunately for me, my luck wasn't ideal when it came to the ores. Literally, out of all the levels that I traversed, only one adamant ore node spawned. Very unfortunate. Nonetheless, when I arrived back at the Snorlax, I was able to feed him most of what he wanted, only missing 15 copper ore and a bit of stone. So I left, but seeing as it was still early, I headed back, hoping for more ore to spawn. I had incorrectly thought that they would reset like the Stardew Mines, which they hadn't. I quickly checked the prices of adamant in Solon's shop, promptly left, and after seeing I had some adamant bars in my chest, I got my sword crafting. My sword was done, but I still needed combat 20 to use it, as well as 20 more adamant bars to craft up my armor. So I quickly grabbed two iron keys that I had made, and intending to use them in the mines, I headed to the quarry. But on the way, I saw a chest which needed one, so I opened it. It contained some kind of mid loot. So of course, after picking up another lost toy near the mines, I opened up another chest using my last key. It contained some pretty mid loot. But I wasn't there for that, I was there for the adamant ore, so I grinded all the way down, grabbing a bunch of lucky spawns along the way, down to the second treasure room. There I fed the Snorlax the last of the copper and stone it wanted, and it happily moved out of the way, allowing me to pass on through. This next stage of levels were really dark and lava themed, which luckily for me, had a lot of adamant ore. I made it a decent way down, collecting a whole bunch of rare items, as well as encountering new enemies and upgrading my combat skills. I got 14 adamant bars smelting the next day. This king slime didn't know what was coming. I collected my weekly flowers and planted them before sorting out my items and placing my ores and gems inside my home. I then collected two iron keys and headed back to the quarry. I quickly made the grind past the second treasure room and got to work collecting as much adamant as I could or while killing as many high level monsters as I could to upgrade my combat skill. I made it relatively far but after reaching more than enough adamant I decided to call it a day in the mines. After leaving I spent 
fed home and got all the rest of the bars smelting and sorted my items. But I noticed that my bar count hadn't changed at all after I added the new ores, so I was a little confused. But I found out that they don't stack, and if you have more than five bars smelting at once, the rest just don't show up. I quickly watered my crops the next morning, then seeing that I had enough adamant now, I decided to craft up a helmet and some leggings. But today, I wouldn't go to the quarry. No, today was to get to combat level 20. So I headed down to the beach where I knew monsters would be, and after killing some, I upgraded my exploration skill for some reason. But that was good, as I unlocked a new spell which would create a giant spectral axe for me to swing. So, wanting to use it, I continued through to the main beach, but on my way, I spotted a turtle lying on its back. What a, what a little guy. Oh. What? Diamond in hand, I walked through into the monster spawning area. I headed all the way to the end where the most dangerous beach monster could spawn, the score pepper. But luckily for me, they would generally just get one tapped by my fireball. I sat here the entire day encountering a terrifying elite score pepper and eventually made it to level 18. But I couldn't keep going as today was the lantern festival. I headed into town and entered the celebration, which was pretty cool. I saw that a villager was selling some food that greatly increased my maximum mana and health, so I spent all of my money on purchasing and eating these goods. And after chatting with some villagers, I found another merchant selling a badass, really cool, and actually useful literal dragon pet that I could have afforded if I hadn't bought the food. I watched the lanterns in the sky, slightly annoyed at myself. But all was fine, as after watering my crops, I crafted the last of the armor that I needed. Level 20 combat was my only enemy. So I headed west this time, hoping to find some higher level monsters that I could possibly kill for possibly more XP. Unfortunately, they were all level 1 or something only slightly higher. I stayed around for a little, discovering a cool new little area before deciding that it would be probably best to return to the beach and fight there. I said hello to some beach goers, then noticed that some of the crabs had changed form. Apparently, it was the first of summer, but that didn't matter to me as I was only one level off. I slayed an elite score pepper, which dropped me some new copper armor, and using this, I grinded for the night until eventually getting the upgrade. I equipped all of my gear, which did look a little silly, but nonetheless, I was excited to face the Slime King again. So, after quickly grabbing a bunch of food for me to consume, I headed west. Eventually, I arrived at the Slime King. Hello, good sir. I have come to slay your goofy, uh... Yo, I can kill them so quickly. Mm. Why do they make an undodgeable attack? Never mind, I can dodge. <laughs> More slime soldiers. What? No. Uh-oh! He's so low. Hey, let's go. Get rolled, buddy. Hello? Uh, that's just... Are you, what? Are you serious? It glitched. Man, what if I like leave and then come back? I need to fight him again. Hey, let's go. What? The king just sat there, which was unbelievably underwhelming. On the other side, there was a dungeon where I could kill monsters. Just the exact opposite of what I wanted. So I exited. <laughs> I ended the day putting animal feed into my barn for future livestock. I quickly chopped some trees on my farm the next morning before deciding to head up to Kitty's shop and purchase a sheep and a cow, which I placed in my barn. And batting them, I got my very first animal products. Pretty cool. But that was what I remembered about why I killed the king slime in the first place. I had thought that the elves were behind him. They weren't. But after a little exploration, I finally found the area. This was the elven forest, and I was told to continue forth and try to find Nelvari. Oh! Ah! <laughs> no, that is scary, dude. Yo, it's Groot, bro. I am. Um... <laughs> I eventually convinced the Groot to let me into the town, and I was warmly welcomed. Yo, it's Snorlax. This fluffy chonker might move. What does Bro want? He wants cheesecake and energy smoothie. Yeah, there's no chance you're getting that, buddy. I also got to finally meet Gorwin, the leader of the elves. He showed me to my new farm and happily handed me some seeds to get me started. I blended them, and talking to Lily the slug, she explained that normal seeds wouldn't grow here, only special elven ones. As well as this, she explained her worry about the griffins sleeping on my farm, which refused to leave. <laughs> oh, <you'd>, okay. <gasps> Hooray! It ate the berry. My expertise got it tamed, and after watering my crops, I headed over to my new house. No way, this is my house, dude. Sick. It's it's a house, that's for sure. It's pretty big, you know? That's kind of... My house is awesome. I had one more day to sit here until my meeting with the world dragon would be arranged. That was the dude who I was going to be trained by to fight another dragon or something I don't really remember or uh, wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I quickly watered my crops, then decided to explore the elven town for the day. I found a general store 
store where I bought five dragon fruit seeds, then crossing a bridge found a mana orb donation box where I threw the last of my orbs. I talked to a bunch of elves and even found one with a portrait named Iris. But the stores were where the real magic was. There was a bunch of new capes I could buy as well as pets and food. I even found a merchant selling livestock for my farm and one selling mounts that I could ride. From that point, I knew what I would be saving my money for. I ran home and planted all my seeds before spending the night chopping trees on my farm so I could craft a chest since my inventory was getting a little full. But I couldn't craft a chest or a normal crafting table at the elven crafting table. So I was about to get the griffin to fly me back when I noticed a chest in the bushes containing exactly what I needed. So after watering my crops, I happily deposited my disgustingly full inventory. I then once again headed into town as today was the day my meeting with the dragon was arranged. So I headed over, but I couldn't enter. Apparently, I needed to talk to the druid guy. So I headed into the big tree, but the horrible assistant Wesley refused to let me use the wind lift to get me to the top of the tree, which was where the guy was. So I was forced to use the outside way, parkouring across precarious bits of platform. But I eventually made it and was given a stick as well as permission to see the dragon. So I headed over again, but once again, I was refused access. I was prompted to go find Iris who might be able to help me. Unfortunately, I got a little lost and ended up climbing a precarious flight of stairs, which ended at a really cool looking place, which according to the guard was the entrance to the elven mines. But I didn't have a key, so I left. I eventually found Iris outside the tavern who told me to chop elven trees in the surrounding forest and collect some magic sap or something. Unfortunately, the trees on my farm didn't grow it. So after watering my crops, I headed out into the forest. The trees with the sap were luckily very obvious and I was able to grab all six that I needed in only six or so hours. This was because I was constantly harassed by strong monsters and I'm completely blind and it took me hours to find a tree that was right in front of me. Nonetheless, I eventually got them all to Iris who after infusing them with mana told me to smother it all over Groot. And that's exactly what I did, happy to see him let me past. Yo, hello, where's the dragon at? This looks sick. I heard much of your troubles. Hello, world dragon. The dragon told me that she was happy to see me here, and for my first lesson, I should talk to both Iris and Van about the world that lies outside the elven town. So I headed out and spoke to Iris. She just gave me another job to infuse all of the mana pillars in town with 10 mana. So I headed out, found three out of the four, but seeing as it was getting late, decided to head home. I harvested some acorns the next morning, then heading into town, I got to work finding the last mana conduit. I eventually spotted it near the great tree, and after infusing it with some mana, I returned to Iris who thanked me and told her perspective on hiding the town. I then found Van, who told me he would help if I found his treasure in the south of Nelvari. So I had a look then decide to head into the forest where it was just sitting there. I grabbed the newspaper and returned it to the goof who told me he probably didn't hide it well enough then told me to go see the elder guy. Heading up the wind tunnel I chatted with the man for a while then was told to return to the dragon to complete my lesson. So I did approaching the brilliant beast. I answered a couple of questions then was told that lesson two had begun. My mission was to find common ground with the annoying assistant who really hated me being here. So I had a chat with the elder guy again, who told me that Wesley is very traditional and it would help if I donated a thousand mana orbs to the town. So I got to work, accepted a quest and completed it, bought a bunch of seeds and planted them down. I had forgotten to pause the game while I wrote yesterday's script on day 36, so when I tapped back in it was 6pm. I quickly watered my crops and cleared my farm a little before running into town determined to complete a billboard quest before night. Nightfall. I couldn't get any horse polish, but catching three fish was in the realm of possibility. So I got to work throwing out my rod anywhere I saw fish. I caught a bunch of different ones, but unfortunately no bark fish, the ones that I needed. I did this until late at night, then decided to head home when seeing how much mana I still had, I returned to the conduit, infused it all for some orbs, then passed out on my farm. I started the next day at the proper 6am. I quickly harvested all my produce, then happily sold it along with the fish that I had caught yesterday. I then headed into town as if I was going to get a thousand orbs, I would need to complete both orders. I started with one asking for five lightning and bottles, which I had thanks to killing the monsters in the forest. I handed them over, then began a quest to find animal food, which thanks to my subscription to Kitty's services, I was able to complete instantly. It was very useful, almost as useful, in fact, as you subscribing to the channel, which I would very much appreciate. Thank you. Using the orbs that I had gathered, I decided to buy a bunch of seeds from the general store, then planting and watering them in my farm. I was sure to get a thousand orbs after 
after I sold all these. I then got to work chopping trees on my farm as they gave orbs when broken but quickly got bored and instead flew back to Sun Haven. There I cleared the farm for a little before feeding my barn animals, watering some crops and talking with Peter who gave me a free fishing net. I ended the day placing it down, crafting up an adamant key and flying back to the elven town. Why did you craft an adamant key? I hear you ask. Well, after quickly watering my crops, I wandered into town, chatted with Iris and came across what I was looking for, an adamant chest. Opening it up, I got some golden ores, which was genuinely perfect for my situation. I then headed down and accepted a quest for some animal feed, which I once again completed without any hassle. Then seeing as I couldn't complete the other quest, I ran down into the forest to kill monsters. This was because on death, they had a chance to drop an orb and I could sell their loot for even more. Unfortunately, they were pretty tough to kill, very rarely dropped me a single orb and their loot only sold for one orb each. This really wasn't worth it, so instead I headed back into town where I got fishing. I was still very low fishing level, so they were pretty hard, but I think this is just a little too much to ask. There is literally no green on the screen at all. Luckily for me, I hooked the same fish a little later, and I am an absolute beast. I fished for the entire day, happily selling all of my goods when I arrived home. After watering my crops, I was right back to grinding for orbs. First, I accepted both quests at the billboard, which asked for one animal feed, two of a fire, water, and earth crystal. I had all of these back in Sunhaven, so I took the bird over, watered my crops, then after picking up my crystals, I quickly tended to my animals. When that was all done, I headed over to Kitty's as I had run out of animal food. We had a little chat, then I bought one, immediately flying back to Nilvari and completing both quests. I then decided to do some fishing, but there were no fish really spawning, so I checked the map for other water, finding some near the dragon, and wandered over. Unfortunately for me, there were no fish at all there, but I did find an area where I could jump from a platform through a waterfall, taking me to a room with a chest containing 50 orbs. Very happy with myself, I did a little more fishing, then spent the night in the forest killing monsters as fish refused to spawn, and I was happy to see the elite enemies actually gave a decent amount of orbs when killed. It was raining the next day, and after chopping a couple of rocks, I headed over to my farm where all of my produce was ready. It was pretty cool seeing all of the walk choy wandering away from my farm, realizing now that I just had to wait overnight for my veggies to sell, and I would have the required thousand orbs, I decided to chill out for the day. I headed into town and seeing as I could do neither job, I wandered up to the right shop. I really wanted the lion mount whistle, but I thought if I had enough, I would probably go for the witch broom. But that was 600 orbs, so I got to work fishing. I initially planned to fight for the day, but fish just kept spawning and they were making me bank. I upgraded my fishing skills a lot, giving me the chance to catch two fish at once, and rotating between three different spots, I was able to make a huge amount of money. I ended the day in infusing all of my mana and selling the goods. I had 1,200 orbs the next morning, which I was certainly excited about. I ran into town and up to the donation box where I threw in almost all of my earnings. Wesley reluctantly thanked me and told me he was trying to read a really old Melvarian scroll, conveniently the same one that I had back in Sunhaven. So I returned and after harvesting some flowers, planting some flowers, grabbing a fish, buying some animal food and a sheep at kitties, and finally feeding my animals, I headed into town. When I arrived at the library, I had a talk with Lucia, then entered where the librarian refused to let me take the ancient book. I kept asking and eventually she said I could take a copy, but only if I made it, tasking me with building a pencil using a piece of charcoal. So I sprinted home, cooked up a piece of wood, ran all the way back, but she had closed. Day 42 was the music festival, so after quickly watering my crops and reading some mail, I headed into town and wandered towards the library. Since the festival started at 12, I had time to quickly copy down the text, as well as find and return Toby the child's notebook which he had evidently lost. I then talked to Bernard to begin the festival. I found a shady salesman who told me to come back after the show. How intriguing. Not wanting the dragon incident to happen again, I bought none of the other merchandise and after talking to a bunch of people there, the music began. It started with Kitty's dance group with dragons breathing fire in the background. And after that concluded, the next act was from Claude, who had an emotional piece from his violin. They would have been great if I had the game music on. I chatted around a little before deciding to leave, excited to see what the salesman had in store. Unfortunately, I was teleported back to my farm at 11pm. I guess I was supposed to go beforehand, but it didn't matter as today I would get the ancient words back to the elves. Once again, I had been distracted. I quickly watered my crops, collected my weekly animal food, which I fed to my animals, and headed down. I found the fisherman there who told me that we needed to catch the giant squid, so together we went off on an adventure. Soon we arrived on a small dock in the middle of the ocean, where the fisherman was sure the squid could be caught. The plan? Blow him up. So I was tasked with catching some bomb fish, which I did pretty proficiently, bringing them over. Apparently, I needed 40. So this small
Coral Dock was where I spent the entire day just catching these stupid bombfish. At least I was getting an incredible amount of fishing experience. Eventually night fell and I was forced to return to shore, but with 34 bombfish in my inventory, I was sure I would finish tomorrow. Unfortunately, I was once again inked the next morning. So after harvesting all of my flowers, I ran down to get some sweet revenge. I headed back to the docks where I quickly caught the last of the bombfish that I needed and handed them over to Peter the fisherman. We loaded them all into the cannon and as the squid got closer, we launched the fish. Loud explosions were heard and finally the squid was gone. It had even left me a little squid guy, which was pretty cool. But that was beside the point. I had the text and I needed to deliver it. I flew back over to Nelvari and sprinting into town, I had a chat with Iris before meeting up with Wesley. He was flabbergasted at what I had done for him and admitted that we may have something in common, completing my quest for the world dragon. So I returned to the sanctuary and after chatting for a while, I decided to begin the third and final lesson. It went something along the lines of growing something and I had been given a seed, so I put it in the ground, infused it, watered it and left. Since I wanted the witch's broom, I bought a bunch of seeds in the general store and spent the night planting the bowl and doing some fishing. The dragon told me to come visit the next morning, so after putting out and watering my crops, I ran straight over. Iris and Van were already there, and apparently we needed our combined strength to grow the crystals, but we weren't strong enough until Wesley came and helped growing the crystals. That's what I call character development. I thanked the world dragon for their wisdom and collected my seeds as a reward before heading back to my farm and flying back off to Sunhaven. This was because I had an old quest from the golden dragon guy to visit the northern woods, so I ran over and and entered the strange area. There was an emo Snorlax blocking the way, and I was unfortunately tasked with getting 10 wheat and 10 potatoes for it to eat. Wandering down, I chatted with Lucia, then entered the general store where I bought the seeds I needed and spent the night watering and planting. At this point, all I needed to do was tend to my plants on both my Sunhaven farm and my farm in Nelvari. Once I was done doing both, I grabbed some food and decided to head to the quarry as I wanted an upgraded adamant pickaxe, axe, and watering can. Unfortunately, when I arrived, there was a problem sleeping on the minecart. Luckily, all it wanted was some iron bars, so I quickly ran home, snatched some up, and returned as quickly as I could. When I got there, I had a chat with Lynn, and genuinely just clicking through the dialogue options, I accidentally organized a date tomorrow morning. A little confused, I fed the golden chunker and headed back into the mines. I eventually made it past level 20 again and got to work collecting all the huge amount of adamant ores lying around. I spent the entire day down there mining adamant, and when the night fell, I ran home and smelted them all up. There was a golden fish in my fishnet. I got really excited that it would be worth a huge amount of money before remembering they exist in real life. Disappointed in myself, I headed into town to meet with Lynn, but there was a problem. I didn't know where she lived. Luckily, it happened to be right next to where I was stealing the local produce. So we headed to the beach and talked a bunch, and I was sure to choose the right dialogue options. Except for, like, once. But overall, it was a success, so I bragged to Lucia about it before flying over to Nelvari and watering my crops over there. I then headed back over to the quarry. There, I accepted a quest to get meat for Solon and headed back into the caves. I once again spent the entire day down there learning a new dash attack spell, which was pretty strong. I managed to get a decent amount of adamant before exiting, getting them smelting and tending to my animals. I watered my crops the next morning and after crafting up an adamant pickaxe, which would take 8 hours, I collected my free 20 flower seeds and headed over to Nalvari. There, I watered my crops and seeing as my pickaxe was crafting, I decided to spend my day here. But after walking around a little, I realized there was really not much to do. So since I hadn't been in a while and I needed some more berries for the griffin, I walked into the Nelvari forest. I spent the entire day down there, slowly but surely making my way back to Sunhaven the long way, all the time looking out for and picking up the berries that the griffin loves. Since I hadn't been down here for a long time, there were so many forageables around and I was able to gain a stupid amount of maximum mana from all of the random mana tones scattered everywhere. I eventually made it all the way back to my farm. My wheat was finally done, so I harvested, watered my potatoes, and fed my animals before flying over to Nelvari and doing the exact same thing, minus feeding my animals. But I quickly returned as I wanted that adamant axe. On my way, I had a chat with Lucia, where I unfortunately also organized a date with her, absolutely on purpose. This may not end well. I chose not to think about it and instead entered the mines where I spent the day chopping adamant ore. Nothing else eventful really happened today, other than upgrading my dash attack and when I decided to leave, absolutely absolutely rolling these two bugs. I killed them from across the map, they're so mad, I just know it. When night fell, I sprinted home and got my oars smelting. Today was my date with Lucia, but seeing that started at 5, I had some time to myself. First, I crafted up my adamant axe and harvested some potatoes, as well as tended to my animals. I then 
and saw that the purple bear was back, but I still unfortunately was too poor to purchase anything. They looked really intriguing though, like they could transform me into different things. Very curious. But now that I had the food I needed for the emo lax, I had business to attend to. I fed all the food, waking the big guy up, letting me pass. There was a strange mushroom field, some pretty difficult parkour, and some enemies that I could kill relatively easily with all the spells that I had learnt. Continuing onwards, I appreciated how beautiful this area was, until I checked the clock and realised that my date had started two hours ago. I sprinted back through the parkour, the mushroom field where the big guy was, arriving in town, and I was too late. This is so sad. Luckily for me, the game had given me another chance, so not wanting to miss it, I quickly headed over to Nelvari where I harvested all my crops, readily headed to home and decided since I had a new axe to spend the day on my farm clearing up. I opened the entire area near my animals as well as a small path down to the beach. There I said hello to Hermie the squid and cleared out the disgusting living environment. I then spent the rest of the day until 5 clearing out the upper area to the left of the beach, which on hindsight I will probably never use. Almost forgetting again I sprinted into town and in a short 10 minutes we had concluded. So I thought I had some time to head north again but unfortunately I was mistaken and instead spent some time in the sandstone quarry near the forest. When night fell I decided to head home where I bumped into Lucia again. She wanted a second date. This is why they call me the Rizzler. Until of course she phased out of existence. I think that was all a delusion. Apparently it wasn't but I still had something more important to do on day 52. I quickly tended to my animals then flew over to Nelvari where after depositing some things I headed into town and up to the mount store. Since thanks to my crops I now had enough to afford the broomstick. I bought it, hopped on, gained 30% movement as well as looking really swag. I chatted with some elves before returning to Sunhaven where I cleared out a large area from trees, stones and weeds before heading to the town hall to see Lucia where she wasn't waiting. I rechecked and she had asked me to meet her at her house and it just struck me that she probably doesn't live at the town hall. I scoured the map for a while before eventually finding the house. I bet she didn't expect me to pull up on the broomstick. We chatted in her house for a while which was actually pretty cool other than the literal lava which I reckoned was pretty hot. <laughs> I then headed back into town where I found a goofy mage who was just sitting in the corner spinning cards. What a strange lad. Crafting up a chest, the next morning I collected some mana tones from the mail, then placed down the chest, filling it with the junk that was filling my inventory. I then tended to my animals before wandering into town, chatting with Anne who gave me pearl earrings, which was an insanely good safe keep, giving me lots of money every day. Thank you very much. Heading into the town hall, I went over to the building section and thinking my house was still pretty small, I bought a level 2 house per permit for literally all of my money, but I was sure it was going to be worth it, so I returned home to craft it, but I couldn't find it anywhere. I hoped it would miraculously appear tomorrow. So in the meantime, I wanted to see what was at the end of the northern forest, so I headed on my broom, easily killing any monsters who faced me. And can I just say, this is genuinely really cool looking. Eventually though, I arrived at a layer of dark mist so thick I couldn't get through, and I was prompted to go see the golden dragon. So that was the plan the next morning. But I was more focused on finding a way to upgrade my house. Soon enough, I found a construction table, which I thought probably did house upgrades, and while I crafted it, I even spotted a chest in the corner of my eye. I went over to grab it, earning a solid pile of gold. But when it was finished, I placed down the construction table, revealing I could make the upgrade, just with 100 planks. So I got 120 planks crafting, also placing down the tile maker that I decided to craft, for some reason. At this point, I headed into town, but was distracted when John asked me to put flowers about the place. I got two down but couldn't find the places for the others, so I gave up and headed over to Rosa, who gladly escorted me up the mountain to the Golden Dragon. He told me that I should ask Claude about the problem, for some reason, so I did. He really didn't want to tell me anything, so I asked Lucia what was wrong with him, and she said to ask Jun the counselor. Day 55 was a bit of a disaster. I woke up and grabbed my planks that, thanks to Anne's earrings, gave me eight gold per plank. Very nice to see. So I crafted up the tier 2 house upgrade and while I waited I tended to my animals and read my mail. When it eventually finished I placed it down and my house upgraded rather blandly but it looked great so I decided to start clearing the surrounding area of things. Only now did I realize I had forgotten to pause the game again and it was currently 8 p.m. I ended the day trying out some new tiles I had crafted in my tile maker. I woke up at a proper time the next day and after tending to my animals I headed into town trying to find Jun. I eventually located him and he told me to give 
Claude a food that he likes and recommended Liam the baker to tell me what food to cook. So I asked Liam, who replied that Claude really likes tomato bread and if I could help him water his tomatoes, he would make it for me. So I happily watered his crops, which he handed to me and told me to make into a tomato sauce. Checking my cooking pot, the recipe needed sugar, so I headed to the general store where I bought some, threw in the cooking pot and got some sauce cooking. But now it was time for the summer barbecue on the beach. Talking to Bernard in the town square, I was brought down to the festival and after talking with a bunch of different people, I got the hint that there was some kind of hot dog eating contest that was going to happen. So I naturally signed up and before I knew, it was time to eat. It would have been great if I were told what button to press to eat the hot dog. Luckily, after a third of my time was already gone, I realized you click E and I mashed until the time was gone. Unfortunately, losing to Kitty. But the celebrations weren't over as I spent the last night of summer watching fireworks over the open ocean. Day 57 was the first of fall. I began by tending to my animals, then grabbing my tomato juice, I headed up to Liam's. I handed it over and he said he would have it done tomorrow. So with the day to myself, I decided to catch up on all the quests I had promised to everyone. First, I wanted to complete Jun's flowers, so I headed to the tavern, placed one down, as well as one near the bridge. He thanked me, so I decided next was to complete the Monkey Madness quest, which required me to head to the Eastern Wilderness, which wandering over, I realized I had never really explored. Lucia met me at the entrance and told me that there was a treasure down the pathway, so I got going. I killed a bunch of goofy monkey lads before arriving at the mountain that the treasure was supposedly found. The monsters there were much stronger than anything that I had previously faced, and taking them down was a real hassle, so I decided to just sprint through instead, eventually finding the treasure. It was pretty decent. After saying hello to the golden dragon, I sprinted home. After tending to my animals and selling some things, I excitedly headed over to Liam's, but he wasn't home. I quickly found him and collected the tomato bread, which I sprinted over to Claude's mansion and handed over. He was really happy and decided that he was fine with telling me about the dark fog. As it turns out, there's a place named Withergate that has a really bad reputation for being a bad place. Claude was from this place and had been keeping it a secret, hence why he didn't want to speak. Luckily for me, he told me to go speak to a witch. Heading over to the farming shop, I found her inside, and after explaining the situation, she told me to wait two days. In the meantime, I decided to head back over to the eastern wilderness, where I needed to find Albert's old sword, as well as slay 15 prickle tots. I searched for the sword for a little, but when night fell, I gave up. Day one of two of waiting for Catherine was upon us, and today I want to complete both quests that I had to do in the eastern wilderness. I headed over to where the prickle tots were when I saw another pathway upwards, which led to a man on a taxi car. He told me that he was missing a wheel and needed me to find it, so I continued on my way and found it just on the floor. Heading back, I returned it to him and he thanked me by asking for an iron bar to repair it, or something. But this wasn't what I was here for, I instead wandered upwards and found the cactuses. Turns out the ones I was hunting were the little dudes who shot projectiles. Snipers, one may say, and traditionally, these snipers do a lot of damage from afar, which they do, and are easy to kill close up, which they weren't. These horrible little squirts had a monstrous health bar, did a stupid amount of damage, rapid fire attacks, a lot of knockback, and were a real pain to kill. By the time night fell, I had got 11 of them, but not wanting to torture myself any longer, I headed home. Wandering into town, I realized that Catherine had completed her research. I had a chat with Lynn's mum, then talked to the witch, who told me that the water in Claude's backyard could help, and to meet her there. But I wanted to finish my cactus killing quest first, so I ran over to the eastern wilderness. I had luckily remembered about the taximan and gladly handed him an iron bar, opening up the taxi service, which could take me from here to the town. Heading onwards, I arrived at the mountains and just to be safe, I killed the remaining cactuses I needed by standing from far back and sniping them. I eventually completed my goal and happily returned to town. There I remembered about the magic water or something, so I headed up to Claude's backyard where I met the witch. Claude showed up midway through to express the fact that he didn't think it would work. They started arguing, so I left and was told to meet Catherine the witch at the fog barrier but it was getting late, so I spoke to Rosa to collect my slaying cactus reward and said hi to Clive the taxi man. I was excited for the next day as I was going to be able to get past the barrier. I quickly flew past all the enemies and met up with Catherine, who after working her magic made the fog disappear. Kind of. Nonetheless, I was able to get through and after working my way through an invisible maze, I appeared on the other side. There sat a three-headed dude in a boat who told me he could bring me to Withergate. I gladly accepted, but we were quickly stopped by a massive 
massive stone in the water caused by a massive viper. I chatted with some goofy guards who told me the way to defeat the snake was to probably pelt it with 250 pieces of sandstone. I certainly didn't have this, so I asked to be returned to my farm, which appeared to be a completely new area of my farm that I had never been before. I then hopped onto my broom to fly over to the sandstone quarry. I spent the entire day down there mining rocks, which was made much easier thanks to some spells that I could use. I woke a little late the next morning, so I had to hurry. I quickly read my mail, attended to my animals, and rode my broom upwards, soon arriving at the sandstone quarry. I had one mission today, to get 250 sandstone. And with my mana berries in hand, I was sure I could make it. Standing in very convenient places, I got to work breaking a whole bunch of rocks, and after spending a stupid amount of mana, I reached my goal. Now that I had these, I headed home, talking to Lynn along the way, who gave me a shield that she made, which was hopefully really strong. Happy with this, I headed home and made an attempt to navigate through the dense vegetation to find the three-headed furry, which I eventually did, but seeing the time, I decided not to head over to the blockage. So after tending to my animals, I headed over first thing next morning. The dude took me over to the snake, where I pelted it on the head with 250 sandstone, knocking it out. The other demons left to flex to their boss, leaving me to happily continue on my way into the city. In the tube through the sewer, I was told my mission here was to slay the moon dragon who lived in Withergate, which was a first for me. When we arrived, I decided to head up the ladder where I was transported into the town. There, I met an important guy, apparently, who really not liking outsiders decided to banish me. But this wasn't going to stop me. I instead decided to take the alternate route, which unfortunately for me, was through the sewers. Luckily for me, the monsters weren't too strong and the parkour wasn't too hard, so I was able to complete it with relative ease. But now the problem arose, how was I going to stay sneaking around the city? Luckily, there was a dude named Donovan who, for some some reason wanted to help me. He told me that being a citizen, having a residence, meant that they couldn't kick me out. So we snuck into town, me in my brilliant disguise, and entered an apartment complex. There I was given a room to live in as well as access to a roof which turned out to be a really cool farm, overlooking the active neon city below, with all kinds of insanely designed things. I spent the day exploring the farm and my room, as this was genuinely, in my opinion, the best looking area of the game. I dedicated day 64 to exploration. I talked to a bunch of people, found a subway, met with Donovan, found a tailor's shop run by a giant spider, and eventually arriving at the general store, bought 10 eggplant seeds. I then decided to attend to my animals that I wanted to head back to Sunhaven. So I went into the subway where the tickets were too expensive, and I thought they probably didn't bring me home anyway. So I headed down to the forest, but realizing it probably didn't bring me home either, I went up to Donovan's sewer, which I eventually found, and descending, decided that there was really no point, as getting home would take me 4 hours anyway. On my list of favorite places, Withergate was rapidly falling. I spent that night on the apartment roof planting my seeds as I needed 3,000 tickets, the currency of Withergate, to pay off my home. My inventory was filled and I wanted a chest, so I headed to the rooftop where I found a crafting bench, but no way to craft a chest nor a normal crafting table so I could craft one. My inventory was chock full, all I wanted was a chest, and the game was refusing me. Nonetheless, I got to work watering my crops, then decided to sell anything that I didn't immediately need which was probably the best way to empty my pockets. Once I was done, I realized I could head to the sewer from the farm, which could return me to Sunhaven. All is forgiven. But at this point in time, I had forgotten about my animals. I was 3,000 tickets in debt, and I wanted to make some progress. So I spent the entire day down in the sewers, killing monsters for tickets. They gave me a decent amount and allowed me to try out some cool new spells. By the time night fell, I exited and bought some seeds from the general store, which I planted on my rooftop farm. I decided that I wanted to visit at Sunhaven, so I took the boat over, traversed the rough landscape of my own farm, and after crafting up some chests, I headed up to tend to my animals. And with nothing else to do, I wandered into town to chat with some villagers. I met with Lucia and Jun before spotting a strange stack of creatures pretending to be a human. Seems like normal Sunhaven activities. But with a huge amount of debt ever present back at Withergate, I headed back and got to work watering my crops. Once I was done, I decided to head back down to the sick looking septic tank filled with toxic fluid and there I did some fishing for the night. Some pretty difficult fishing. Good thing I'm an absolute madman. I quickly watered my crops on the rooftop the next morning, then since I still hadn't explored the upper areas of the city, decided to head upwards. I found a cool new festival area there with some free food and a bunch of different stalls accepting red festival tickets, but I didn't have any, so I moved on to the main festival area with a bunch of cool festival mini games. I decided to get my fortune red, which I'd said was a scam, then tried the strength meter where I got 1600 damage, earning me 30 
tickets. I browsed through the other games, but not wanting to spend any more tickets, I wandered further up. Having a ride on the Ferris wheel, I took in the view, and wanting to see the Great Castle, I took the stairs even further upwards. Crossing the lava moat, I arrived in the castle, talked with some people, talked to the king, and found the Moon Dragon's lair, which I couldn't enter. I also found an outside area where a smaller room was hiding, and within it, I unintentionally did a little theft. I hastily made my exit and spent the night in the festival. Day 68 was purely a ticket-making day. I quickly harvested all my produce and sold it, then decided to head over to the general store where I bought a bunch of seeds. I bought these home and planted them before deciding, since I wasted the entire last day, to head down to the pool of toxic waste on my farm and fish there for the entire day. Literally, the entire day. I leveled up my fishing a bunch, giving myself a 7% chance to catch a treasure chest every time I caught a fish. By around 10pm, I decided to clear my farm a little and head downwards to my apartment, where I just chilled for a while since yesterday's fortune had told me to go to bed at exactly 12pm. So I waited until then and passed out. I woke up the next morning outside my apartment and nothing had changed. Slightly annoyed at the fortune teller, I noticed my huge amount of tickets I had gained from the fishing and crops yesterday and headed down to the general store. I bought out the special items then decided to purchase 38 eggplant seeds. I knew these would be a hassle to water every day but they would surely be worth it. Arriving at my rooftop farm, I got to work watering the ground as well as expanding the farm with my hoe. It took a long time and a bunch of clearing of wilderness to complete it, but eventually my farm was done. Happy with the amount of tickets I would definitely make, I once again headed down and got fishing in the toxic waste septic tank. I noticed the little guy eating my crops, so I headed over to the crafting table, but I couldn't craft any kind of scarecrow. So after watering my crops, which took a damn long time, I decided to head down to the boatman and row back to Sunhaven. When I arrived, I checked my mail, tended to my animals, then realized that unfortunately, I needed 10 wheat to craft a full scarecrow, which I only had 7 of. Hoping that some store would sell wheat, I headed into town and checked some stores, thankfully finding whole scarecrows on sale at the farming store. I also made the slightly silly purchase of an adamant watering can, but seeing as I had a lot of space to water, it seemed worth it. After catching up with a bunch of folks around the place, I took the hike back over to the boatman and returned to Withergate. I sacrificed a plant for the scarecrow and finally placed it down. My adamant watering can, I had decided, was a brilliant investment. I was able to complete my watering in a fraction of the time it would have taken me before, and I was real happy about it. So, after I was done, I had plenty of time to speed through the town and arrive at my destination, the Withergate Forest. I came to a crossroads where a sign told me the Glorite Caves were upwards, so curious, I entered the area. There were a bunch of pretty strong enemies, which after some time I managed to kill, excited to see what awaited me on the other side. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to continue. Disappointed, I headed downwards instead to the actual forest. There were a bunch of enemies in every area, increasing in difficulty as I trekked on, being forced to use all the spells in my inventory. But eventually, I made it to the end, which annoyingly was nothing but a clearing of trees, hardwood, and hardstone. So I sped back through the enemies on my broom, making it safely back into town. There, I sold all of the monster loot and got to work at the toxic septic tank. Harvesting some two melons, I quickly watered all of my crops again, then wandered over to the General store as I had some tickets saved up. I bought out all the seeds on sale and having already ran out of funds, I returned to my farm and planted them all. Unfortunately, seeing as my tools were still too weak to break the hard stuff, my farm was stretched out of my scarecrow's range and I needed a new one. So I took the boat back to Sunhaven, trekked through my farm, read some mail, tended to my animals, and headed over to the farming store. There I bought my scarecrow as well as some medicine, which I gave to the doctor for a quest I had accepted some 60 days ago. With that all done, I returned to Withergate where I placed down my scarecrow and wanting to craft some spooky machines, I opened up the crafting table, but I couldn't make any since I didn't have any spooky stone. I spent the night searching through my farm for any rocks. I had a whole bunch of crops ready the next day, 37 eggplants to be exact. I was going to make so many tickets, but I did have a little already, so after watering my remaining crops, I wandered over to the general store and bought some demon seeds, which I returned and planted. The next step on the agenda was fishing, but the path downwards was getting a little crowded, so I got to work clearing it up. This is when I had the thought, since I was farming on the rooftop of a massive building, whether or not wood would fall if it fell off the edge. So I spotted the perfect target, chopped it down, and 
Well, that's unfortunate. By this point, I was sick of fishing from the same tank, so I headed outside to find another suitable place. I first visited the sewer from which I emerged from, which there weren't any places, then near the entrance to the city where I found a man fishing, and spent some time fishing the witch fish man. Heading outside, I was damn rich. I excitedly watered all my crops, then ran down to the general store, where after buying some demon seeds that were on sale, I bought 46 eggplant seeds. I knew these, combined with all my current seeds, would surely get me to the needed 3,000 tickets. But there was still a lot of work ahead of me. I spent several hours hoeing out the area, watering and preparing the soil, then planting the seeds. By the time I was done, my farm was noticeably increasing in size, which was a bad sign for my watering can, but a good sign for my bank account. I then decided to head over to the monster crafting table, where I found the recycling machine, and remembering about all the scraps that I had been finding, decided to craft it. Unfortunately, I still needed a bunch of stone, so I chopped every rock that I had on my farm. My quest for rocks continued, when after watering all my crops, I decided that to find any hidden stones on my farm, I would chop every single tree in the area. So that's exactly what I spent the day doing, clearing out a very large space. And I don't know why, but this tree makes me just very uncomfortable. Sunhaven developers, please delete it. But my brilliant plan hadn't worked very well, and I was only up a few stones. Luckily, there was another area similarly packed, which could hopefully have stones in it. I cleared the entire area, gaining one rock in total. Yeah, this might have been a wasted day, but at least my entire farm was now completely cleared. But on day 76, I had a new plan to get some stone. After harvesting and selling some demon orbs, I cleared thorns off my plants and watered them all before putting my plan into action. Said plan consisted of, since I had some spare tickets, buying a subway ticket and just hoping that wherever it took me had some stone. Unbelievably, I was taken to exactly where I wanted to go, a place with stone. It was a relatively relatively small area, but as not to waste any of my hard-earned tickets, I spent the entire day clearing every last stone there, half of which strangely dropped candy corn pieces. My mission to break every rock was pretty difficult due to my weak little pickaxe, but was made bearable thanks to my spells. Eventually, I managed to collect every single piece of stone, luckily just getting over the 100th threshold I needed. Returning to Withergate, I checked some stalls that accepted only candy corn as currency, but everything was still much too expensive. But this didn't matter as after quickly harvesting some orbs and watering my crops, I got my recycling machine crafting. But it would take a while to craft, so I decided since it presumably recycled forageables, I headed down to the sewers to stock up on garbage. Since the machine had taken a hundred of my health as part of the recipe, I was low the whole time, not helped by the fact that the parkour that requires A makes the game two frames per second in midair, I ended up dying once. Nonetheless, I returned straight away, finding a new area past the sewer exit that was filled with garbage, which I I happily picked up. When I was done, I returned to the surface where I headed over to my crafting table, put down my recycler and placed in my things. And I must say, the animation for this machine is just immaculate. Today was the day that all of my eggplants were ready for harvest. Unfortunately, after grabbing all of them, I realized I was only halfway to my goal of 3,000 tickets. So I quickly harvested the small remaining plants, then collected the refined materials I got from the recycling machine before heading over to the general store. There, I bought a whole bunch of seeds, then returned home and got hoeing the ground. This rusty hoe was incredibly inefficient for my level, so I decided after completely watering and planning to return to Sunhaven via boat and wander into town towards the farming store. I was stopped by Catherine the Witch who asked me to grow her 25 carrots, which I might follow through on in a year or so. I quickly made another stupid purchase of an adamant hoe, wandered back home and tended to my slightly neglected animals. I quickly tended to my animals again, then first thing headed back to the boat dude. I took the elevator up to my rooftop farm where I did some harvesting and got to work preparing the ground for more plants. The new hoe was helpful, but it would be better if half the time it didn't just not register. Nonetheless, I got all the watering done and after chatting with the demon woman, I arrived at the general store where I purchased another stupid amount of eggplants. I like eggplants. Heading back to my farm, I planted them all, unfortunately having to expand past my second scape rose radius. Not wanting to lose any of my hard-earned eggplants, I decided to once again return to Sunhaven where I ran straight through my farm and town to pick up a full scarecrow and come back to Withergate where I placed it down. My farm was really starting to take shape. I had no real plan the next morning other than somehow make some tickets. I began by watering my stupid amount of plants and after collecting all of my recycled materials, I headed back into town. This is when I remember
remembered about the quest board where I could do things for tickets. So I accepted one to collect and deliver a shirt, which I picked up from the tailors and handed over, giving me 50 free tickets. Annoyed at myself for not having been doing this before, I accepted another one to get a horseshoe for the spectral knight. Unfortunately, I got completely lost trying to find the pet store, so I looked at the map where the signifier for where I was said that I was getting lost in downtown Withergate. How on earth did they know? Nonetheless, I eventually found it, bought the shoe, and returned to the knight. Now, with more than 100 tickets to my name, I headed back up to fish in the pond. It was raining the next morning, which I was happy about because I didn't have to water. Although, I did waste some time taking in the view from the top of the building. But I had things to do, so I headed over to the quest board. Unfortunately, both of them involved growing crops on my farm that I didn't have growing. So instead, I decided to head over to the subway, purchase a first class ticket to see where I would end up. Surprisingly, it took me to another place filled with candy corn ores and other stones, so I presume that was just what the subway did. I spent the entire day down there mining the candy Unfortunately, my pickaxe was still really terrible, and since my first class ticket had resulted in a bigger place to explore, I didn't end up getting all the candy, which was sadly a little bit of wasted tickets, although I did level up my bunch. It unfortunately wasn't raining the next morning, so I had to do all of the watering manually. Only a couple more days left. When I was done, I headed over to the quest board where I decided to accept both quests, one involving delivering a ribbon, and the other where I had to pick up something from someone and deliver it to somewhere else. So I got to work heading to the tailors where I picked up the ribbon and handed over to Tony the cat, who was thankful, giving me a cool pirate hat. But then it was time for the hard one. I had to collect a back scratcher from some dude named Fidget. I have no idea who Fidget is. I headed up to the festival and spent some time talking to everyone, but no one was fidget. But luckily, I ended up finding the goofy bat who handed me the back scratcher. I thanked him and headed up where only a few hundred meters upwards, the person I was delivering it to was sitting. A little confused, I received my tickets. All of my eggplants were finally ready for harvest, so I quickly grabbed them all. All I needed now was one more day of watering. Surely these get me enough tickets, right? I do not want to water any more plants. Just in case, though, I headed down and accepted another quest, this time from two people who I actually knew, so it was easy enough to complete. Now, with the whole day ahead of me, I decided to head into the sewers and take the shortcut to the Withergate outskirts, where I fished with the royal fishermen for the entire day. Leveling up my fishing skills and catching all kinds of strange things, I was happy to see that they made a difference in today's earnings. And this was it. The last of the crops I needed were yes, ready for harvest. finally. Yay. No more. No more watering ever again. I'm never gonna water another plant in my life. I sold them all along with some other things. Then seeing as today was Halloween, I headed back over to Sunhaven. There I read some mail and tended to my animals before wandering into town and chatting with Bernard, who brought me to the festivities. I talked to a bunch of people in costumes and trick-or-treated at everyone's homes, gathering a bunch of candy for myself. I saw some stalls and seeing what they were selling, I decided to buy a dark wizard who had turned himself into a toad. Doing a little more trick-or-treating, I decide to head home for the night, deciding to let Pebbles or Knob, who had been following me around for like 80 days at this point, to just chill out in my house for a while, and instead I would take around the wizard toad. Day 85 was the first of winter, so after tending to my animals, I decide to head into town and check out everyone's new winter outfit. I met with a whole bunch of different people before realizing that I actually had the 3,000 tickets that I needed and headed back over to Withergate. When I arrived, I handed over the tickets and was finally, after all these days, able to progress the story. I was assigned with entering the Great Castle Place, so I decided to say hello to the Demon Lady and wandered upwards. When I arrived, I was met at the door by the Water Hair Lady, who escorted me to the throne room where the king stood. He told me that he would let me see the dragon if I collected 10 Glorite Crystals, which would do a whole lot of harm to the forest. Unfortunately, he didn't care and sent me on my way. So I decided there was nothing else much to do other than go down to the Glorite Mines and see what I could do. When I arrived, I tried being swag and avoiding the enemies, which ended badly for me, but nonetheless, I entered the mines healthy. And there the goons were, the same ones that were stealing last time, but this time with snipers and a whole bunch of reinforcements. I managed to take one out with a spell, but got stuck on something on the floor and unfortunately died. But this was not the end, as I sprinted back ready to get my revenge. I managed to take out both snipers with a flame beam attack and was able to take out the others with my sword. Then it was time to kill Artero, 
the real villain. He was really strong with a dumb amount of health and a ranged attack. Luckily for me, he's an idiot, and I got him stuck relatively easily, killing him soon after. They all ran away, leaving me the Glorite crystals. So I headed back over to the king, where I witnessed the slime get dropped, and after some discussion among the demons in front of me, so was I. I was told the next morning to go see Lucia back in Sun Haven, so I took the boat over and traversed through my farm. I said hello to Pebbles, aka Nob, then tended to my animals, and reading my mail, I noticed Bernard outside my home. I asked what he was doing there, and he told me that he needed help with some ingredients for the winter's festival soup. I had no option to decline, so I headed into town and noticed the pot outside the town hall, needing some pretty simple ingredients. But more importantly, I had found Lucia. She told me that there was going to be a meeting with some other leaders about the fog tomorrow, and I should show up at the town hall around 11. So in the meantime, I decided to get the ingredients. I first bought two chickens, then 10 potato seeds, which I respectively placed in my barn and planted outside my home. The golden dragon summoned me the next morning, telling me the situation was getting worse. But more importantly, the soup's ingredients were doing well. Other than, in fact, noodles. I couldn't find where to craft them anywhere, and I was about to give up when I decided to head up to Liam's to see if he stocked it. And amazingly, he actually did at a bit of a steep price. Nonetheless, I was calculating how much money I would need at the pot when I was rudely interrupted by the town meeting, discussing the approaching darkness. I said that I'm actually a citizen of the attackers and they have a sick festival. No one clapped. But I was told to go see Rosa to be escorted up to the dragon, so I headed over. The situation was looking a little dire, but when she said she was too busy, I was forced to scale the mountain myself. Unfortunately for the cactuses, I am the speediest broom handler in the Wild West, and I was through in no time at all. The dragon told me that the darkness was attacking and dropped me down after the fight had ended. I was told that the darkness was spreading and spawning goofy darkness lads in the town outskirts, and I needed to collect a thousand dark essence from them, so I spent the day spawn killing some wolves and snakes. I noticed a strange man named Otis on my farm. Apparently, he was selling dark essence seeds, which I could grow in only two days. So I bought 20 seeds, planted them, and headed into town to search for the dark essence plants, as they were a much more efficient way of farming the stuff. After I got most of it, I decided to head to the beach to see if there were any there. There wasn't, but it was pretty obvious I hadn't been there for a while. I cleaned the whole place up, then wandering back upwards, I bought a taxi ride to the eastern wilderness where I chopped plants and killed a bunch of monsters. I sold all of my forageables the next morning, then after tending to my animals, I saw I still needed more than 600 essence and decided to somehow get it all today. I began by heading back through the town to the eastern bridge area where a bunch of essence plants were growing. I annihilated them all, then continued onwards, killing all the monsters over there as well. Then, for some reason, I decided to go back through town, but noticed the plants had respawned. Grabbing them all, exiting, then re-entering, I noticed that they were all back again. And this is how I got 600 Dark Essence in one day, just loading the same piece of map over and over, eventually by around 10, gathering the last of the essence I needed and running home, realizing how much of a waste of money the essence plants I had bought had been. I left my computer to eat on day 91, and unfortunately, forgot to pause. And I woke up in the hospital the next morning, heading straight home where I harvested my dark essence, watered my crops, and collected a personal Snorlax in the mail, which I placed down. I then tended to my animals before heading up to the train station and meeting Lucia, who after receiving the essence was able to push the darkness back once again, then wrote up a letter that was offering peace, along with Claude's concerto, which I was tasked with bringing to the prince. So I took the boat over to Withergate where I found the dark prince. He read the things over in the castle and after some deliberation, decided it was worth rooting for us against the king. But then, it was finally time to be summoned to the moon dragon. I entered his lair and was met by looming altars meant for offerings, which are all a little bit expensive. So instead of that, I decided to just face him with my sword and began the battle of the century. He had 90,000 health and I died almost instantly. That just probably isn't viable. I accidentally woke up really late the next day, so I hurried over to the altar room. This was because I had decided that the best course of action was to make offerings, not to kill the dragon. I had a look in each altar and decided that the easiest one consisted of a bunch of forageable fruits. I checked in my chests up on the rooftop farm, and seeing I didn't have nearly enough, I decided to take the boat back to Sunhaven, trekked through my farm, and checked my chests there, proving that I would need to forage some more, and petted my Snorlax. After quickly doing some work around the farm, I headed west into the forest in search of fruit. I got a decent amount in the end before returning and heading back into town. There, I put in a bunch of ingredients into the pot and wandered downwards, finding some oranges, strawberries, and blueberries, and a bunch of apples. But seeing as there was nothing else, I headed upwards into the northern forest where I found a bunch of oranges 
bananas, as well as peaches and strawberries. I was going to appease this moon dragon in no time at all. But I remembered I needed 20 of each fruit type, so I spent all of day 95 exploring the world trying to find new fruit trees, as well as collecting the ones that had already grown from yesterday. I managed to get over the threshold for both strawberries and oranges. I tended to my animals, then sold a bunch of my things before heading west once again since I needed a bunch of peaches. I managed to secure four of them before also remembering the forest in the south of Nelvari had peaches, so I headed there and spent some time collecting all the berries that that area had to offer. I managed to get more than 20 of each fruit except for peaches, which since they gave extra spell damage when eaten, I had none left in my Nelvari farm chests. I was sure I would complete my quest the next day, as I only needed four peaches. The first tree was empty, the second tree was as well, the third one and the fourth were also empty. I don't know what the chances of that is, but I'll bet it's pretty damn low. But I didn't get discouraged as I had another thing I wanted to do, which involved heading to Liam's bakery, purchasing 45 noodles and donating them to the potluck. Bernard thanked me for putting in the effort and gave me nothing. Oh well. Heading back to my farm, I planned to travel back over to Withergate, but seeing as it was already getting pretty late, I instead ran down to the beach where I said hello to Hermie and spent the night clearing the area. So of course, I was going to get my three final peaches I needed today. I ran through the forest, got to the first tree, which was empty, then the second tree, which was empty. I was getting worried. I entered the elven forest, found one tree with two fruits, but no others, literally anywhere. I spent the entire day searching this entire game for one peach, and I didn't find one. I'm certainly having a lot of fun. Day 99 was surely the day. I couldn't fail. I flew straight over to the eastern forest, not even bothering checking the first two peach trees, entered the elven forest, and there they were. Two delicious peaches. I grabbed them, took the boat straight over to Withergate, where I sprinted into the castle, opened up the altar, and I couldn't believe it. I had only needed ten to begin with. Just a tiny little bit annoyed, I loaded in the fruits and got a ring and a message saying to complete the other eight altars as well. Seeing as I only had one day left, this really didn't seem viable, so I instead decided I had to go home and have some fun. I had gotten some sunite ore in the mail a while back, the best ore in the game. So I got to work smelting it into bars, then heading into town to find a suitable chest to open with a sunite key, until I spotted the perfect one inside Lucia's office. So the next morning, I got the key crafting. While I did, I saw the purple bear was back, and seeing as I had tickets, I bought a puppy potion. And upon drinking it, I became a puppy. In my awesome new form, I grabbed the sunite key, and headed into town. Arriving at the town hall, I entered, went up to the chest and opened it. I surprisingly got two really strong rings, some money and some tree seeds. But that wasn't it for today. I returned to the bear and after some searching, I found it. The Archmage Potion. And upon drinking it, I became Lucia. She was in the library, so I went up and said hello. She unfortunately had no reaction. Thank you so much for watching. There's still so much to this game, so smash like if you want 200 days. And also, let let me know in the comments. Also, please follow my Twitch. It's kind of dormant right now, but I promise I'll start streaming at some point in the future. Link is in the description. Please subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100,000 by the next Ice Age, and I'll see you next time. Hopefully. Please click on the next video. Please, I'm begging of <laughs>